Hi everybody and welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to share how to make another delicious Polish recipe. This is one of my favorites. Today I'm going to share how to make the most comforting chicken soup. It is something that I love to have when I'm feeling a little bit sick. I'm going to show you how to make frost soup. Let's look at the ingredients that we're going to need. This is a very simple recipe, so first we're going to prep all our veggies. For this soup, you would typically use root vegetables, so I've got some onions, leeks, celery, parsnip and carrots. I'm going to start with my leek. You want to just cut off the ends, and then you want to cut it along the middle. Typically leek has a lot of, or can have a lot of kind of sand or dirt inside, so this way you make sure to wash it all out. If you have a leek that still has the leaves attached, you can actually use just the leaves. Next I'm going to move on to my celery. So you want to cut off all this part that kind of looks like a root. And then I'm only going to use about half. And you want to just shave off the outside part. And lastly, I've got my carrots and my parsnips, which I'm just going to peel using a vegetable peeler. I'm going to cut off the ends. With all my vegetables prepped, I'm gonna go and give them a wash, and then after they're cooked in the soup, you can use it to make vegetable salad, which is the queen of Polish salads. And next, I have my onion, which I'm just gonna peel and cut it in half. And that's it, those are onion sources. All right, I got some chicken legs here, which I've actually washed uh, to remove any of the excess fattiness, and sometimes it has little blood clots and stuff in there that I don't want because they'll make my soup dark. I want it to kind of remain nice and clear. And I'm gonna go and take off any of the excess skin and excess fat. If you want to keep it low fat, you can take off all of the skin, but that brings a lot of flavors, so it won't really taste the same. Okay, I've got all my ingredients ready. Let's clean up and we can start to cook. All right, there's one more thing that I have to do before we can throw it into the pot and start cooking our soup. I'm gonna heat up my pan without any oil or anything. I'm just gonna put my onions in there and I want to pretty much burn them and this is gonna really give us a lot of flavor. If you're working with a gas cooker, you can just basically burn them on the naked flame. I'm working with an induction hob, so this is the next best thing. That's the type of thing that we're looking for. All right, now everything's ready, so let's continue. I've got a pot here and my heat is still off and all I'm gonna do is put my chicken in at the bottom. and I'm gonna to top it up with cold water. And this is important, the rule is that your chicken goes into cold water, but your veggies go into hot water. So I'm gonna start heating this up and wait until it comes to the boil. It looks like my soup is about to come to the boil, and as soon as it does, I'm gonna reduce the heat down to like, very, very low. The trick is to cook it low and for a long time. You don't want the water to be bubbling and agitating everything because doing it this way, then it keeps the soup nice and clear. I'm seeing that the foam has started to form, so I'm gonna start collecting this now. Okay, I've cleaned up as much of the foam as I can, and I've already reduced my temperature down, so I'm gonna go in and add my vegetables. I'm keeping them whole, so just go in with your carrot, my parsnip, got the leek, and celery our onions which are beautifully charred and i also have some spices for extra flavor so i've got some bay leaf here i have some allspice whole peppercorns and some lovage and then i have a little bunch of parsley if you had a little bit of twine you could tie it together so it's easier to remove at the end i don't have any so i'm just gonna try to loop it around one of the stems and that should help me Okay, and that's pretty much everything. Try not to touch your soup very much. Uh, as I said, the idea is that it cooks very slow and gently. There's not a lot of agitation going on. If you need to add a bit of extra water to cover your ingredients, by all means do that. But other than that, you can just leave it run for two, three hours, and then we can come back and our soup will be ready. You don't need to cover it or anything like that. It'll cook fine like this, slow and slow is the key. This is typically a Sunday dinner, so you can put it on in the morning, leave it run and by the time you come back you've got your dinner ready it's also paired up with breaded pork chops this is a very typical polish sunday dinner all right my roast has been cooking for a couple of hours now but i want you to see how clear the soup is and this is also kind of the speed that you want to cook it at you can see that there's like maybe one or two bubbles coming up every couple of seconds that is what you want you don't want any kind of like vigor simmering or anything like that 
Now it's the perfect time also for me to salt this. So I'm just gonna take about just under a tablespoon and I'm gonna put it in, but I wanna make sure that it goes into the soup itself and just let it dissolve. I don't want to agitate my soup much. I'm just gonna let it cook for another couple of minutes. It smells fantastic. I had a little taste there as well and it tastes real, so I can't wait to eat it. Okay, the soup is pretty much ready. So I'm just gonna take out the parsley and also the leek. And then on another bowl, I'm gonna take one of the carrots and one of the chicken legs. And I'm gonna let them cool for a couple of minutes before I work with them. And the soup, I can just take off and leave to the side for now. I have some special pasta here, which you always use for your rosé, which looks like this. They're called nitki in Polish. They're just like little threads of egg pasta. So you're waiting for about a thumbs up oil, and then I'm gonna put in a portion of this to put into my soup later on. Okay, so we're ready to put everything together. My pasta is cooked and drained, and I have it here in the bowl. So I'm gonna take my carrot, which has had a chance to cool down a little bit now, and I'm just gonna chop it up a little bit. I hardly need the knife, it's been cooking for so long, it's so soft. So I'm gonna just put that straight into my bowl as well. And then we can move on to the chicken. So I'm just gonna discard the skin and I wanna shred my chicken and take it off the bone. It's so soft, it just peels right off. And now I'm just gonna put it into my bowl as well. Just bring it around the pasta. I have some fresh parsley as well, which I'm just gonna tear and sprinkle around my bowl also. This gives the soup such freshness. And now for the final bit, that delicious soup. That is my beautiful bowl of rosu. Let me try it. Mm -mm. It is so good. The flavor is fantastic. It just fills you up with warmth. It is so comforting. I absolutely love this soup. I don't know, you're gonna love it as well. There's a saying in Poland that you have to strip to rosu which basically means that this soup makes you so warm, it makes you sweat, and so you need to take your clothes off to cool yourself down. That's why it's so perfect when you're feeling a bit under the weather, it just perks you right up. The chicken is super soft, it's like falling apart. The carrots as well, they're nice and tender, and you can see how clear the soup is. I can see all of the ingredients in it right through the broth. It's so pleasing to look at as well. It is just fantastic. This is how I love to have my rosu, but every Polish home has this. It's called Maggi. I'm not entirely sure what it is, but it packs a lot of flavor and it's fantastic in soups and in sauces. If you want to give it a bit of extra flavor, you could put a couple of drops of this. Typically put it into your own bowl rather than put it into the pot of soup itself. But I love it as it is. It's just everything you want in a chicken noodle soup. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this recipe, make sure you leave me a big like and a comment down below of what you thought of the recipe. If you're from Poland, I'm sure you've had this before. Let me know what you think of my version and what would you add? What would you do differently here? I would love to hear. If you tried this recipe and you want to post it on social media like Instagram, make sure that you tag me. I will leave my handle down below. I would love to see it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel also so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos on my Polish recipe series. With that, I'll leave you for this video and enjoy.